What's up everybody? Today we're doing another book review, this time on the Slav Defense. The name of this book is um, called Play the Slav. Uh, you see it right there in the picture. Uh, it's by Everyman Chess and the author is a, a FIDE master uh, from England uh, named James Vegas. Uh, who has uh, actually a PhD in English literature so uh, writing is uh, not a problem and he's written other books too uh, one uh, on the pick that is uh, uh, a classic um, this book right here um, I think is geared for players probably from 1600 to 2200 so I think that would uh, encompass the majority of chess players and uh, right off the bat, I think the most important uh, aspect of this book is the introduction. The introduction of the book is 34 pages long. And what I like about it is that he breaks down all of the main uh, principles of the Slav, right, in that introduction. Everything. He talks about, um, I even wrote some of the, these uh, things down. For instance, White's uh, D5 break, right, against the uh, pawn structure C6 and E6. Uh, he talks about the isolated E pawn that Black will get. He talks about the E5 break from Black's perspective. The C5 break in the Slav. Uh, C6, E6 pawn structure, what we know as the, uh, the uh, Carol Slav pawn structure, right, because you have the same pawn structure in the Carol Khan defense and also Scandinavian, right, so... There's some food for thought as far as building your repertoire with openings that have similar pawn structures. Uh, so he talks about the C6, E6 um, uh, pawn structure versus White's D4, E3 pawn structure. Double F pawns that occur in the Slav. Um, he talks about, um, did I mention the uh, isolated E pawn? Oh, Black's light squared bishop. Uh, which is going to be the topic of uh, today's video uh, how sometimes it can get it can get trapped if, if black is not careful and I just literally scratched the surface like I said the introduction itself to me if you don't know anything about the Slav or if you're uh, trying to um, you're a strong player but you want to add a new opening the intro itself is is gold as far as letting you know all of the basic um, principles of the Slav uh, right up front before you actually get into the games and then once you get into the games what I enjoy about it is the lucidity of the explanations right it's not a, a computer database dump and just you don't have any idea uh, you know uh, what's going on in the position or you're stuck there trying to figure out why uh, white or black did certain moves he's actually talking a lot right a lot of uh, clear uh, explanations and that's why I mentioned him having a PhD in English literature earlier because uh, I have a feeling that that ability to write and convey ideas uh, is definitely um, benefited us as, uh, as the reader here so what I'm gonna do uh, in this video is just give you a, a little taste of what's in the book we're gonna talk about the bishop uh, blacks light square bishop in the Slav that can sometimes end up uh, being out of play all right so and this will give you an example of how he goes through each concept and it shows games um, you know and uh, tries to give you uh, a feel for exactly what he's talking about in a practical sense um, another thing I want to say about the Slav is um, if you really want to uh, look at um, a good match between uh, two players uh, and just you know in the Slav look at the 1935 and 1937 World Chess Championship ma matches between Alexander Alakon and Max Erva that's like basically Slav 101 right there there's all Slav games and if you just go over those matches you will learn a lot of the basics on how to uh, play the Slav and what's great about the Slav, of course, is it's very solid. It's known for being so solid. Some players even say it's a little bit boring. Um, but yeah, all, uh, you know, a lot of, not all of the world champions, a lot of great 
players have played this live at some point, whether it's Kramnik, uh, Smyslov, Irva, Alakon, what have you, have all uh, played this live. What I do want to say too is in this book is that he recommends this line um, called the Sokolov line, which is seven knight bd7 as opposed to queen c7 which is also very sharp so he has like um you know particular uh way that he wants you to play and also he has like an exciting line um to kind of spice up the exchange variation in the slob because a lot of people don't like that drawish uh seemingly drawish variation that they're playing black right they try they want a chance to win as black and you know, white comes and just plays exchange variation. And everything's super symmetrical. So he gives you a line where it kind of uh, creates some imbalance in the position. All right. So there's a lot to say uh, say about the book. Um, I suggest you go uh, click in the links below. I placed the book there. Like I said, if you get it from my channel, it will, def it will support uh, my channel. You know, so I do have links below so that you can check it out donation links of course and um so let's get right into it so we're gonna um intersperse some of his notes with my comments and we're gonna talk about the uh bishop all right the light square bishop in the slav now let me just say one of the main reasons why the slav is played with this move c6 as opposed to as opposed to the move uh e6 is that the move c6 allows white, excuse me, black to bring out his uh, his dark square, his light square bishop on c8. All right, so it defends it defends the center, supports the center, and allows the uh, bishop to come out. All right, so the bishop will often end up on f5. White will uh, try to uh, exploit the position of this bishop and building up a full center. You and sometimes playing moves like f3. E4, etc., etc., and sometimes that bishop on C8 uh, can be blocked out. So we're gonna um, look at this brief example of a line that um, Vegas gives here. So this game is um, between Ivanchuk and Alexander Morozevich, and this is a blitz uh, game from 2007. So just check it out real quick. So we have d4, d5, c4, c6, slav, knight of 3, knight of 6, knight c3, d takes a4. Okay, and the reason why uh, white plays a4 here is because um, black is actually threatening to keep the pawn with b5 on the next move. Of course, a4 is discussed, I mean, um, the gambit is discussed in the, um, the book e4, right, which is not too dangerous uh, for uh, black. But a4 is the main line, then black plays bishop uh, f5. Notice that with the pawn also on uh, c4, white cannot play queen b3 attacking the b7 pawn. e3, e6, bishop takes c4. So the trade-off has been made. Black uh, gets his bishop outside of the pawn chain. However, he loses uh, some influence in the center, as you can see, by trading uh, his d-pawn for white c-pawn. Bishop b4, putting pressure on uh, e4, castles, knight bd7, the Sokolov line, now knight h4, uh, happened in this game, bishop g4, and now f3, bishop h5, g4, knight b5, and you can see the attack here, right on the, uh, the knight. Knight g2, bishop went back, knight e2, bishop e7, and now e4. So you can see white's center um, being pushed forward, bishop b3. Now a5, to maintain the knight on um, the b6 square. Okay. And now knight c3. And now Morozevich castle, which was a mistake. Here, black should play the move c5, okay, and it's according to uh, Vegas that um, it, it um, ensures that the bishop on g6 will be able to get back in the game, all right? So, for instance, c5, bishop e3, c takes, takes, and now e5, bishop e3, 
then h5 all right and say for instance f4 um h takes g4 and queen takes g4 okay and the bishop still has a chance to get in the game via h5 so after castles for Morris Avich, f4 happened h6 f5 e takes g takes and bishop h7 knight f and knight f4 and he stopped it right here so the bishop uh remained locked in and that was it for the for the remainder of the game so he stops here to just let you know what can happen to uh that light square bishop so now we're gonna go um to the next to the next game so here is uh, uh topolov uh topolov kramnik from the uh, World Championship game in 2006. And now you're gonna see the same line. So we're gonna just speed through that. Here you have knight e, knight e5 here. Of course, this, the ideas are the same. F3, E4, hitting the bishop. E4, bishop G6. Bishop E3, C takes, queen takes. So we go right into this end game, right, Kramnik. Kind of playing like a bird, like almost like Berlin defense with against D4 also. Like these, you know, Kramnik was, uh, you know, loving these these uh, complex middle games, right? Getting the queens off the board and just playing these endings with the black. So he did the same thing with the white pieces, right? With the Berlin Wall. Bishop takes C4, A6, King E2, Rook G8. And you'll see the purpose of G8, which is pretty cool. Um, rook H D1, Rook C8, hitting the Bishop B3, Bishop C5. Now A5, King E7, Knight E4, Bishop B4. Okay, now the Knights get exchanged, and now F6. And so this is the whole point of the move, Rook G8. The reason why Rook G8 was played in the, was to free the uh, dark square Bishop. So that that bishop could come out to a c5, all right, which in turn allowed the move king e7 and then f6. And now you can see uh, black's bishop can come from g6 and come back in the game via e8, all right. And then black wound up drawing this game. So he doesn't he doesn't go through the whole game at this point, right? This is just an introduction, okay. So going back. Again, you can see the bishop is, is kind of, the light square bishop that is on g6 is kind of shut up. And now you see this move, rook g8. Notice how, oops, sorry about that. Notice how rook g8, right, protects this square from this guy, right, which allows this guy to come out here. That's the idea. And now you can see it. F6. And now this guy can come here and you know get back and get back in the game and again they wind up the uh, drawing. All right, now we're gonna get to our, our final example. We're gonna get to our final example and we're gonna go through this game quick. But this is on the same theme and hopefully, like I said, you get a, a, a idea of how he goes through these different um, principles. Of the slide defense. So this game is between uh, Boris uh, Averick, uh with the white pieces, whose picture you see in the video, and uh, Ivan Sokolov, who he bases, who the author of Vegas bases the repertoire on, and that's why you see this this move, uh, um, not Queen C7 in the slide, but Knight this Knight BD7 instead. So Sokolov has the black pieces. Okay. So again, we're gonna just speed through the opening. Knight e4, knight e7, knight takes c, uh, c4, knight b6, knight e5, a5, okay? Making sure that this knight uh, is established there, all right? g3, 6, bishop comes out. Again, like I said, we're going to get right to the point here, h6, knight d7, and there's e4, so white is right, real solid, 8. D6, F4, F5. And also, you might notice there's maps on the screen. This game took place in Izmir, which is in Turkey. I, I had to, I actually looked that up. 
And what I also found out is, is uh, that is the ain't the same as the ancient city of Smyrna. So it's basically like an open air museum out there. So so many things happen in that area, buildings, structures, etc. Et so if you like like the religious history and even like you know uh, you know the apostles, you know like uh, being in uh, Smyrna, also like Alexander the Great uh, took over after after the Romans. So a lot of history in that area. So the ancient city of Smyrna is Izmir, which is in Turkey. So you see on the map, and this is where this game took place in Europe European Club Championship in 2004. So there you go. It's a little geographical and historical tidbits for you. So here F5 was played. Okay. E5, Bishop C7. So now we're in the same situation that we spoke about. Look at the light square bishop of, of black. Knight C1, Knight B6, Knight D3, Rook E8, Knight C5, Rook B3, Knight B4, and this is a long game, but I'm just emphasizing uh, what we're talking about about this light square bishop. Pieces come off. So again, these are the type of positions you'll be in sometime in the Slav, solid, but sometimes you'll be under a little pressure, okay, from white. And that's what you see here. But notice this light square bishop. Now it's on d6. Right? Because it's important to have all your pieces involved in the game. So with f5, it guarantees that this bishop will not be shut out the game. The queen c4. So, of course, now Vega says here if um white knew like what would happen in the future with this bishop he probably would try to restrict it a little more say by playing move like bishop f3 right queen e8 at h3 and so you can see and of course h3 is in case um uh black uh you know to prevent black from playing bishop h5 of course uh queen e i'm sorry queen e2 queen e2 uh F3 and H3, you know, to keep keep black from being able to uh, play that, you know, keeping this bishop restricted. However, what he did is he played queen c4 here, okay? And this allowed bishop h5, rook c1, king h8, king f2, bishop d8. And again, you can see this bishop ready to spring into action. Queen F7 now, Queen C5. And you see this improvement. Pieces. Okay. Rook E1. And you can see that although white has some more space, black has comp um, compensation in the fact that um, white has to constantly keep an eye on this weak D pawn. Okay. Rook a6, rook b3, bishop d8, you know, a lot, of, a lot of maneuvering. Bishop c3, rook b6, rook d3, and now bishop d1. So now you see the bishop, as soon as they had an opportunity with this, this rook right here, moving off the, the back rank. Okay, so maybe better was this rook takes here, according to uh, Vegas. Instead, rook e3, bishop d1, rook a3, bishop e7, now bishop b3. And it's funny, uh, contrast the bishop, you know, a few moves ago, right? The bishop was on g6, kind of out of the game, and now look where it is. Queen e2, bishop b4, king g1, bishop d5, and look at the glorious um, return of the bishop. Right from obscurity on G6 to being in this actually in the, in the center of the board, okay. And that's why I wanted to show you uh, this game here. It's King H2, H5. Finally, Bishop takes, King takes, and now White has to uh, be worried about his light square protection around the King. Bishop e7, 
like I said, just speeding through this game. I wanted to show you primarily just about this bishop. A lot of maneuvering uh, took uh, place here. And this move was a mistake because you can see it gives up the second rank. Right, he's, he's attacking this pawn on b7, which is cool. Right, but you can't do it at the cost of giving up the uh, second rank like that. So queen e2, king h3, rook d8, rook 3 d2, queen f3. And so now the black queen, queen is like dangerously close to the white king. Rook d3, queen g4, just harassing. King h3, and now c5, and this is a major break in the slide. Okay. And one of the ideas here is if bishop takes a5, then um, uh, c4. Okay. Forking the queen and the queen and the, uh, the queen and the uh, rook, of course. All right, <clears throat> and then of course you lose the bishop. All right, so that's the idea here. This bishop is uh, hanging. All right, so rook three d two happen instead. Check king g two, c takes d four, bishop takes d four. All right, Sokolov plays rook b d eight. Nice positional move. However, he misses. The opportunity just to take care of rook takes d4. Of course, analysis hindsight is 2020. So Vegas shows this line that Sokolov could have played here. Where he picks up uh, the win, right? The rook is just uh, hanging. So Sokolov missed that move and just played rook h d8. So he missed the win. And then um, Avrik makes a mistake here and plays queen c3. Okay, he could have played queen e3, all right, with the double attack on the bishop and kind of avoiding the combination. He plays queen c3, and then now Sokolov plays rook takes d4, rook takes d4, queen e2 with analogous uh, line to what I just showed you. So basically, Avrik walked in, into, first Sokolov missed it, and then he walked into the combination. Um, Avrik uh, walked in right into the combination. So to avoid that, he had to play queen e3 here. But that's neither here nor there. The point was to show you um, just one um, section of all of these principles and how he goes about it. So Vegas first shows you, you know, a problem, for example, you know, a situation like, hey, um, sometimes in the Slav, the the uh, light square bishop can end up being trapped off. So it gives you a little example, as we saw in Morozevich. Then in the next in, um little um snippet he shows you the kramnik uh the topolov kramnik game where he shows you kramnik's solution to that particular problem and then he shows you the entire game as we saw here average sokolov where he makes sure his bishop um doesn't uh get trapped so he goes through these different scenarios right you know, double f pawns they'll show you example of playing with that and etc cetera, etc cetera. so like i said it's definitely instructive, definitely will improve your chess, and it's good for both uh, sides. Even if you don't play the Slav, I think it's important to at least become familiar, um, you know, and learn these type of openings. And it's, also, it's always good, too, to have, like, a super solid opening in your repertoire, because even if you're, like, a sharper player, you like playing Dutch and stuff like that, you might go on a skid where you might lose a few games in a row. And you're just like, you know what, I need to just play real solid and just not lose, right? We've all been there. And so, Slav is an excellent uh, opening like that. You know, not only do you have chances, but, you know, reputation. And it's easy to find examples because players are all, you know, top GMs are always uh, playing the opening uh, like the Slav. So, anyway, that's my book review. Excellent. Thumbs up. Of course, I don't have any like endorsements, you know, anything like, you know, but it's just my personal opinion. Excellent book. And, um, you know, I, like I said, if you want to get it, just go on the link, link below and get it from there. Help my channel. Even if you don't get the book, please donate to my channel, support my channel. Enjoy the videos. Thank you for uh, watching. Um,
And uh, any questions or comments, hit me up in the links uh, below. And I'll see you guys um, soon on the next video.